Hey guys, welcome back to a very special mainframe interview edition. Mainframe is powered by the Chuckload of Comics YouTube channel. If you've ever watched uh, my show before, you know I am a diehard Mad Magazine fan. Have been for decades. That's why it was such a gut punch when uh, they announced that they would be shutting down production after 67 years. Well, we have a very special treat for all of you Mad Magazine fans. Here to tell us about their new uh, movie parody book, Claptrap, which is available over at uh, Indiegogo. Uh, please welcome Mad Magazine alums, artists, and writers, Mr. Desmond Devlin and the great Tom Richmond back again on the Chuckload of Comics channel. Guys, welcome to the show. Hi, hey, Chuck. Hey, everybody. Congratulations, by the way, in uh, uh, keeping the uh, movie parody genre alive. So big, big hats off to you guys. Thank you. We're happy to do it ourselves. So we're glad other people agree. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's 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 a true pop culture art form, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, it's just it, we just couldn't let it uh, fade away into nothingness. We had to we had to keep keep the genre going, carry the torch. Well, before we get into the the new project, Claptrap, uh, which is awesome, by the way, I saw everything uh, online about it. I want to just ask you guys, what happened over at DC and Mad that caused them to cancel <laughs> cancellation after sixty seven years? You know, whatever you can say. Like, big cutbacks over there. I mean, I think AT and T bought Warner, uh, Warner, you know, um, Media, and they immediately started imposing cutbacks on all the divisions. So DC doesn't get away from that, and it's uh, so simply a matter of they don't, you know, have the same budget they used to, and they don't have the same circulation they used to. So you know, they ended up really slashing things and turning Mad into kind of a reprint publication. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting because yeah, they, before they before they canceled it they, they tried this whole new relaunch thing with a new sized book and all that uh how, how did that affect you tom and sort of your your day-to-day work over at mad uh not not me very much because when they moved to burbank you know uh bill morrison became the editor and bill and i have known each other for a long time so it was very easy to work with him and the other editors there and and I went from being the new guy to being like the grizzled old veteran at Mad. <laughs> so, so I was, you know, actually kind of involved with helping them with certain steps of the parody, uh, you know, like layout and everything. But um, interestingly enough, when they uh, when they decided to do all these cutbacks, you know, Mad was actually on the rise. Uh, mm-hmm. Circulation was up; it was up to like 150,000 copies an issue. And um, it was doing pretty good. So, you know, I, it's just, I, I think that the whole print, they decided to just shrink and compact all the print uh, in DC and, the, and they put most of their emphasis on the intellectual property that they were able to license out to movies and, and TV shows and toys and all that stuff. And MAD doesn't have a lot of that potential. I mean, they got Spy versus Spy and I guess Alfred, but beyond that, you can't take our movie parodies and make movies out of them because they were movies before we made parodies of them you know so there's not much licensing potential i think that that's one of the reasons it got cut so badly yeah it was kind of i mean it was obviously a big bummer for fans of the magazine but uh, you guys like i said keeping the keep carrying the torch keeping the genre um alive let's talk a little bit about well i want to get into claptrap but first let's talk about the two of you guys um like let's talk about sort of a little bit of your work history with mad magazine uh, take a trip down memory lane and also just how you grouped together and uh, partnered on this new project desmond yep um well i've been i've been uh it was a bad i'm 36 years um i started writing there when i was a teenager um me and dicky bartolo were the two teenage contributors to mad at one point in our lives certainly not now and um at some point i started you know writing the parodies they basically you know offered me one sort of a test to see you know how i do at it and they liked it so i've been doing a lot of them for the last 20 you know plus years and i started doing those not too long before tom started at the magazine so we just ended up being you know paired up on a various assignments so it's not like you know they give a parody and tom and i go into a room and say okay what do you want to draw what do you want to write <laughs> basically i you know, i do the script i turn it into the editors and then they pick the artist that they think is suitable or is available or whatever and a lot of times it's not a a tremendous amount of interaction between the writer and artist sometimes it's not at all um in, in tom in my case we sometimes email about questions or you know details about the parodies that you know we want to pass along but generally it's all was filtered through the edit- editorial board yeah yeah tom tom little backstory and you know how you got into band magazine and uh how you linked up with uh des 
Well, I started in MAD in 2000. Uh, so I, in fact, it's, it's almost exactly 20 years ago today that my first issue came out with my work in it. Um, and uh, very quickly started doing movie and TV parodies. I was in maybe two or three issues before I got my first parody, which was a TV show called Malcolm in the Middle which uh, Des wrote. So he wrote the very first uh, uh, continuity is what they call that mad, the, the, the movie and TV parodies that I did. And we've collaborated on um, between 30 and 40 of them over the course of the last 20 years. You know, I've, I've done art on a lot more than that and Des has written a lot more than that, but they sometimes pair up with their artists and writers. But uh, so we've worked together a lot, you know, over the years doing this very thing. And uh, when Mad decided they weren't, were going to switch to reprints uh, and not really buy any new material or put any new stuff out there, the, one of the first things they cut were the movie and TV parodies because they take up a lot of real estate in the, uh, you know, in the magazine. Um, they're kind of expensive because the writer and artist has to be paid, you know, to create them and uh, there's no licensing potential. So they just, they, they cut those right away. and. Besides the fact that we weren't going to get paid to do them anymore, uh, we were bummed out because we love them. I mean, we love reading them. I love reading the ones Des writes that I don't draw. And, you know, <laughs> so, I mean, I just, it's something I grew up with. And, and it's just, a, like I said before, it's a pop culture, you know, art genre. And uh, we just, we decided, you know what, we can do this ourselves. And so we decided to try this book project. Well, I want to talk a little bit about it, but you're absolutely right. I mean, in Mad Magazine, if you see it on the rack, one of the first things you flip to, or at least I do as a fan, is let's look in the middle and see what movie parodies uh, <laughs> they're, they're, they're doing this quarter, this month. Um, right. So let's talk a little bit about the book. Let's talk about the concept of uh, the book, Claptrap. What can people expect? Man? What tell, tell us sort of about the, the project as a whole. Well, Tom and I have been talking about it for quite a while. We sort of, we sort of had a general idea on what to do and we were going to do it, but... You know, he had work, he had other work, I had other work. And eventually we said, well, we got, yeah, we got to get this thing on the road. So basically we're just doing the kind of movie parodies we, we've always done. It's the same, my writing style wasn't going to change that much. His art style wasn't going to change that much. But we want to do it in a, uh, a collection, in a book, and be able to do a few things with the layouts or the jokes that, you know, a little different from man. So people, you know, who know us and, and enjoy our work and are willing to support the project. You know, they kind of know what they're getting into, but we want to give them something they don't expect as well. And originally the plan, we figured we were going to do about half the book would be you know, classic parodies of the past. Um, we've done one or two of those in the past, before in MAD and got a good reception. And the other half would be parodies of the new movies that were coming out and we'd have like an even mix. And I think Tom will tell you, you know, what happened to that plan. <laughs> <laughs> 2020 happened. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah. There's no new movies. Right. So so we just switched gears and we said, well, okay, let's just do all classic films. And um, I mean, by classic films, I mean movies that Mad never parodied for whatever reason, but were either big Oscar winning, critically acclaimed films or huge box office hits or were just became cult classics you know uh movies that maybe weren't that big at the time uh but now are like super huge so it's just going to be all those now we're gonna, the, the probably the newest movie we're going to do is uh rise of skywalker which was the first one we did mm -hmm. and um uh that's probably going to be the most current film wow but there's just so many uh, I mean, I was shocked uh, when Des put together a list of movies that Mad never did. And I was looking at these going, how did they never do these movies? <laughs> I but when you think about it. 50 deep on the list. And people yeah, thinking, for Why? sure. They never did that one. <laughs> so. But they, they, Mad only came out for most of its existence eight times a year. Yeah. You know, and there was only room for maybe two parodies per issue. They very seldom did they do more than that. They usually did one movie and one TV show. Right. So that's only eight movies a year, you know, for the exist for the, the hundreds of that Matt. are out there. Yeah. And think about it, you know. In fact, the one that we that we just announced uh, the other day, the Shawshank Redemption, and uh, we published where we put the splash page out for everybody to see, you know, how uh, a sample of the art and, and the writing and everything. That one never got spoofed in Matt. It's now Shawshank considered one of the greatest what? movies ever, right? And, and by a lot of lists listed in the top 10. 
Well, why why didn't it? One, it wasn't a big box office hit at the time. It, it was released. Yeah. yeah, it was released. It was you know what was up? Uh, what else was in theaters at that time? Pulp Fiction. Yeah. And uh, Forrest Gump. I think Clerks came out that year. Oh no, it was Mallrats. It came out so, that same year. So that's and and both of those got got parodied and mad by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pulp Fiction and Forrest Gump. So. You know, so Shawshank. Mad Parody, three of the five <laughs> Oscar nominees that year for Best Picture. Shawshank got an Oscar nomination, but, yeah. you know, man, it only has so, by the time they get from movie to movie to movie, sometimes the movie is too old for them yeah. to really, you know, yeah. them happen to miss it. So, so can, that's can the, you tell us, without without giving away too many spoilers, uh, what can people, what can fans expect to see in Volume 1, uh, or at least of this first printing of uh, Most, most of the spoilers are out. We spoiled them ourselves. So. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we announced a lot of them already. What, what are some of the parodies in Volume well, 1? We opened the campaign. We showed, we had the splash, which uh, fully written, fully illustrated to Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. And that was an easy choice for us because each of us individually, people had come to us and they were unhappy that Mad had canceled doing their parodies. They were no longer publishing any parodies of any kind. Um, and the decision was right before the last Star Wars movie came out. And of course, people who follow Mad over the years, they know they've parodied all eight of the Star Wars movies out of the nine movie sequence. And then the last one was the only one they weren't going to do. So we said, well, obviously, we're going to fill that hole and do that because there's like a built-in desire for that. Um, but then the second one we put up was the Shawshank Redemption. So you can see both of those splashes on the Indiegogo Claptrap page right now. What, what are they called? That's the most important question. Oh, yeah. what, what, what's what, Shawshank what, called? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Shawshank is called the Shawshank Religion. Because we go. we're treating it as more of a religion now than just an ordinary movie. If you go on the internet, <laughs> you can see that that's true. <laughs> and the Star Wars um, Rise of Skywalker movie is um, Star Wars plagiarizing Skywalker. Because a lot of that movie is sort of rehashing all people's right. favorite bits from the previous <laughs> eight. So. so how many are in Volume 1? Is it is it just uh, those two? or? Well, right in, no, no, right now it's 10. Um, but it's soon to be 11 because one of the perks we added to the Indiegogo campaign was that if they hit a certain number, we would add an 11th parody to the book. So, um, and we've already identified eight of them publicly, so we can tell you, you know, um, you can let everybody hear that. So besides those two, we also would have um, Goodfellas, which was never parodied. That was kind of inexplicable. That doesn't really have an explanation why it didn't happen. Yeah, how was that never parodied? I guess maybe just too um, violent for Mad yeah. to me or um, Mad uh, Magazine readers. I think that, no, they, they did, they've done violent movies. They, you know, they've done Stallone movies and Schwarzenegger movies. I think somehow it just slipped through the cracks. I mean, that was um, with, um they did um one of them is um, Unforgiven, the Clint Eastwood you know yeah. Freeman movie. Um, we're doing um, the Big Lebowski, which was. Yeah, that was not a gigantic. It's, that was that one's more like it just you know wasn't one of, considered one of the top top you know box office releases at the time, and we're also doing Blade Runner, which you know didn't have which we had never did. Um, and I don't I don't know how that did it originally, but you know some, mm. sometimes they did some science fiction films and not others, and a lot of, a lot of it was scheduling. A lot of it was you know how big a movie opens back then. A lot of a lot of it was like trying to guess in advance. What yeah. the is to the movie is it something they can do, and they had a, they had a good batting average, but not a perfect one as far as you know figuring out what you know would be best for the magazine to include. So volume one has well, Tom, go ahead. Uh, well, that's the six that we picked, right? <laughs> and the and the other the four remaining of the ten are picked by our backers. Now, uh, two of them, the top tier that we had in in the campaign was called the Megalomaniac. They're all. They all have goofy names. There's the Clod and the Putz and the Schmendrick and mm-hmm. uh, all that sort of thing. So the Megalomaniac was the top one, and that one was the ultimate. So we had two of those, and if you if you chose that one, uh, you got to tell us what movie we did. And then you got all the original art from it, and we drew you into it and everything. So so two people claim that, and we've all, we just today, this, this being... Um, like you know, three hours ago or something. Yeah, right. when we record, recorded this, uh, we re- we announced that one of those megalomaniac parodies is Toy Story Four, awesome. uh, and the guy who picked it, the megalomaniac backer, is Josh Cooley, who directed the movie and what? won an Oscar for it. Yeah. Are you gonna write? Did, did he? Did he? Is he gonna get penciled in? I would. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, we're gonna have to draw him. Yeah. I, I don't know if we're gonna draw him as an action figure 
Like, you know, oh, yeah, no, you gotta make him, make him a toy. <laughs> toy Story Human or Toy Story Toy? Well, you'll have to figure yeah, out. I don't know how we, we yeah. gotta figure that out still. But so, and then so there's one more Megalomaniac one that we haven't announced yet. They picked it, and we're gonna release a splash page to that one, uh, like uh, a little over a week, week. Yeah. a little over a week. And then the other two are the another tier was uh, one where if you pick that one or higher, you got to nominate films that we would do. And then once we're going to poll everybody and once we get uh, like a, the list of the top 10 or whatever vote uh, that got nominated, everybody gets to vote on their top choice. So yeah. so those people will pick the last two uh, of the 10. Then if we hit our stretch goal and we do an 11th one, Des and I are going to pick that one, but we're going to wait until the the voting ones are done. So, because we don't want to double up too much on, you know, one certain genre. We we really tried to spread it out. So we've got, you know, a western. We've got well now two sci-fi's because of Blade Runner, uh, a you know, dramas, we've got a comedy. You know, we've got comedy. a family film. So. Yep. I want, to, so, I want to talk. Well, I'm sorry. Continue. No, no, but but that's it. I mean, we're we so the choices that we make are you know trying to trying to be diverse as far as genre goes and types of films and and appeal to various you know people. I want to talk about um, the different tiers and, and things people can get for backing and what the cost is and stuff like that. But are you already making plans for volume two? Are there uh, <laughs> you, you got a long list sitting in there? Because clearly this might have been work to do on this one first. But um, yeah. We we we've yeah you know, we've spoken you know vaguely about it. I mean yeah you know, we we both uh, you know, both of us agree the obvious you know thing to do if we did it would be a second volume of TV parodies that were never done by Mad. There's a lot of especially with you know all the TV shows now. Uh, Mad Mad knocked off a lot of the top TV shows because they generally a movie comes out and they kind of jumped on the movie and parodied it. A lot of the TV shows they parodied the third season and the fifth season. There was a lot of time for them to you know correct anything they missed. Whereas the movies, you know, there was a window of opportunity that either they hit or they didn't. But now there's like, you know, you know 800 new TV shows that yeah. have followings that people enjoy. And there's other shows. Um, one I always think of is The Wire. Like, Mad wouldn't have considered doing The Wire when it was out because it was uh, it was got a very small audience that never won an Emmy, which is another odd <laughs> circumstance. And, of course, now... A lot of people said that's the greatest show that was ever on television, but it wasn't treated that way. When it was on television. Yeah, we had to actually had some of the cast members on mainframe. They did the same thing. Just, that's great for us if we end up doing a book like this, because you know we can you know pick the shows that have these great reputations, even if they you know missed out during their heyday. Which Instantly, is a very small heyday. My my brain goes to the boys. You know, I, right? I can <laughs> see the boys parody right now. I mean, hell, you yeah. can just, mm -hmm. I mean, just all the stuff that's on Netflix, you know, The Haunting of Hill House and all that stuff that, yeah. that probably never got the mad treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Umbrella Academy. Uh, uh, people have asked about The Mandalorian. You know, that's, you know. Oh, my God, yeah. The Mandalorian. Half the stuff on Disney Plus, I mean, they're going to start rolling out all these new Marvel shows on <laughs> Disney Plus, and you guys are just going to have a field day with it, I'm sure. Well, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the campaign itself. It ends uh, Friday, November 30th, so you still have a few 20th, more weeks. 20th. 20th. I'm sorry. What did I say? 30th. All right. Um, Friday, the November 20th. What um, I want to talk about the different uh, levels of contribution. I looked this up on your website. So, and tell me if, please correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, for just a $12 contribution, you get a full PDF copy of, of Volume One of the book. Uh, no, no, but you're also no, doing hard covers, right? Well, well, that, I have to, I have to correct that. The, the, the PDF version is just of the Star Wars parody. Oh, okay. That's it's a combination. We knew there were, there were some people who might really be into Star Wars, and not so much into the rest of the things that Tom and I are doing. Mm -hmm. So we want to make something available to them just as a Star Wars only item, and also as, by putting it out as a PDF, we can get it out faster than the book. The book is going to take time to write, then draw, and produce, and then publish, and then ship. So that, that it won't be getting out until um, the second half of next year. But the PDF of the parody will be able to finish a lot quicker and get out to them. So that's well, tell me, lest, lest I make any more mistakes, kind of, can you break down some of the? I know there's a lot of different tiers, and you don't got to list mm -hmm. them all. But what are what are some of the the first tiers that people can uh, get when they participate in the backing? Well, after the PDF, on the first thing is the book itself. Basically, you know, it's, we're charging twenty five dollars for the full book, which will include ten. Looks like it's going to be eleven um, parodies because the stretch goal we have for the eleventh parody is getting very close, and it's. Uh, Donor, donations are still moving on that, so we're, we're pretty, you know, confident that it'll get there. 
Um, what, 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 um, I don't remember the, t- uh, the tiers in order exactly. Um, we have another tier. Well, the next one is the Nebish. Right. Okay. And that that one you get um, you get the hardcover book. You always get with, with every tier you go up. You always get what was before it. So with the Nebish, you get the hardcover of the book. You also get the PDF of Star Wars ahead of time, of course. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and then and then the, what the Nebish is is just. Um, and that's then and that's 55 bucks so it's only a little bit more but we're doing a pdf of like a behind the scenes of the creation of that star wars parody so it'll be des's script uh with his notations and all the stuff that he do, does on, does on it uh it's i'll be stuff that got uh, cut out for space or because you know yeah 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 and and that's my, that. you get the pencils and the and the script Right. Yep, my pencil sketches, like my all my roughs, my uh, more tight pencil sketches, you know, the inks, and and then of course you you get the final as well. Yeah, we've been told um, that on a lot of these fundraisers, um, people like to be brought into the process. It's not even as mm-hmm. you know, partly they enjoy the final product, which will be the book, but being sort of you know, being you know, looking at how things come to be and what decisions are made. If you take a, if you compare Tom's sketches to his art and say, oh look, they moved this character over here, or he changed that expression. Or you could look at something in my script and there's like, you know, a joke and it didn't go in. And you say, well, it didn't not go in because it wasn't funny, which is sometimes true. Or it did not go in because the panel was too crowded, which is sometimes true. There's, you know, and they can sort of see for themselves how these things are produced and how they're constructed. And are the, do the sketches already have word balloons and stuff or are they just raw? I'm All the sketches have the word balloons. Oh, okay. So so what I what I do is since I'm do, I'm also the production artist on these because we don't have Mads production art staff or art directors working, uh, I have to lay it all out with all the word boxes and stuff, and then I uh, place all that and then I draw around it, which is the same process we did for Mads. So it's mm-hmm. kind of you know it's different than comic books where. You, you know, comic book artists work from a script and they do the, they lay out the pages and do the visual pages and then they send it back to the writer who then, you know, changes the dialogue and like, you know, does some stuff with that. And then they put the word balloons in and then it goes to the inker. Uh, so, so all the word stuff is done first and the art's done second, which is, which is different. Um, yep. And then the next tier up is uh, the dolt. And that's uh, that. You get all that other stuff plus uh, we sign the hardcover book, so that instantly brings the value of the book from twenty five dollars down to about nineteen ninety five. We had that calculated by <laughs> on uh, on eBay. Some jerk so, scribbled yeah. all over this thing. <laughs> yeah, take that as you will. Uh, the next step up is the schmuck. That's uh, for a hundred bucks. You get all that stuff, the signed copy of the book, and we're doing an exclusive uh, print that will only go out to backers. Uh, Des and I have already got the concept done, um, and actually we'll probably be doing that and release or l- releasing the image of it sometime in December. Uh, mm-hmm. The next step up is the doofus, and that is uh, um, you get your name printed in the book as a you know a big thank you for backing us at that level and above, and uh, that's the one where you get to vote. So if you're a doofus or higher, we'll poll you as to what movies you'd like to see those last two, and then you get to vote on them. So that's very cool. That's great uh, for us too, because basically we want the feedback and the input from the yeah. people who are supporting us. The book's only happening because of the support that people are giving us, and they really like to, you know, give us some direction as to the things they want. So obviously, voting on the two open parody slots is the most, you know, um, the biggest way that they're going to get to do that um, as a group. Yeah. yeah, you get what you what you want ultimately. So people as, sure. as a fan. <laughs> Yeah, we just have to hope they don't vote for cats. Right. <laughs> oh, you got to do the new cats. Well, I, I only saw the first five minutes of it, but what I saw was just so gripping. What well, if they vote for cats and then also cats the butthole version? We have to do both. Yeah. That, that I'm just, be- I'm just flat out drawing the butthole version. If I have to draw cats, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. You know, never mind that. The just other, call it other side. cats. Yeah. Okay, uh, and then the next step up is the Schmendrick. And in that one, I'm going to do a, a, a sketch in it for you. I, is that the one? Because this one really caught my eye where you actually, there's a tier where you draw the backer in the story. Is that the, is that the one you're referring to? No. That, that, this is a yeah, that's one. a couple more up. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of levels. Yeah, we have, a, we have a bunch of them. You know, we, we want to give people a lot of entry points, whatever they're like, you know, they think is yeah. best for them. So everybody can find something that fits their preferences to what they want out of the book or what, you know, what they don't, you know, 
have any interest in. So it's awesome, man. I mean, just your your brain you can just see you just started coming up with with cool new ideas and the fact that the what is it the director of toy story 4 actually backed your project and yeah, yeah. yeah. that's awesome well, you also have a ton of stretch goals um that i want to kind of talk about congratulations by the way on hitting your first two stretch stretch goals how long did that take thank you um a couple, week or so yeah i mean i think about that they weren't very far off from what our goal was, you know, just a little bit more because we we added like uh, a bookmark, you know, and just just a couple of the other little fun extras. So we didn't we didn't make those stretch goals too lofty. But the the third one is, I mean, that one is adding a whole nother parody, uh, which is um, right. we're now about a thousand dollars away from that. So we're very very close to that. Right. But that creates uh, a lot. I mean, that, that's a lot more value for the book. It's people, yeah. you know, get something you know they want. It's it's additional time and work for us to do. So it's a matter of scheduling and production. But you know, we, yeah, we, it's about we another know three weeks. Might be interested in. But that's great encouragement for people to share it on social media. Someone who already backed it, even if they just got the twelve dollar PDF. Uh, copy. Well, no, I'm sorry. If they got the twenty five dollar hard copy, mm-hmm. yeah. it, it, it it encourages them to get out there and, and help you guys get your backing because then they're going to get an extra story that's exactly. for no extra every, money. We, you know? we have yeah, that's everybody benefits from a lot of the stretch goals. So. Well, let's talk about uh, turnaround time production. Um, so the the campaign ends Friday, November 20th. Mm-hmm. How long before um, they start uh, shipping out? Not to rush you guys or anything, just uh, kind of curious. Well, we have a target of uh, we're saying November of next year, so about a year, when when we'll actually be shipping them, but we're hoping to get done a little earlier than that. Uh, okay. But these these take a long time. I mean, it takes uh, it takes me three three days probably to do a page, and we're looking at anywhere from ninety to a hundred pages here. So that's three hundred days of work. Uh, that's a good hunk of a year right had- there. Yeah, the production time and the printing yeah. time and the shipping time, and that's the deadline. Yeah, so, and, you know, Des and I have been working on deadlines for, you know, our whole career. So we're not, we're not afraid of deadlines and we're, and we're not, we know how to meet them. So uh, we're, you know, we're, we're seasoned pros, man. We're, we're not going to blow the deadline or, or ship something, you know, a year late or some of these horror stories you hear about some of these indiegogo projects so we're being very realistic about how you know being able to nail this um but what we're uh, going to do is as we go as we complete parodies and get closer closer to the book we'll be putting out more stuff for mm -hmm. the backers to see so they'll be seeing the progress and they'll get a sneak peek so they won't have to wait all that time to get the whole book but they'll, they'll have to wait to get you know any individual full parody other than the star wars one yeah. yeah, we'll be we'll be we'll be showing sneak peeks of splash pages and you know stuff like that as we go. So when when, when will the Star Wars PDF be ready? You think? Because um, I assume that next, would be the first one. Yeah, next month we're just we just have to finish putting uh, putting it together as a PDF, basically. Well, also we can't send it out until you know everything you know with the campaign is set. We're not yeah. sure. Yeah. Your perks before, your perks are out before the, you know the campaign's finished. <laughs> Right, right. So well, this is awesome. So the whole project's on uh, Indiegogo.com, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So very, very similar to Kickstarter. Um, and the title of the book is Claptrap. So I guess if you Google Claptrap and Indiegogo, it'll right take there. Well, yeah, I mean, and it, well, once the ca- once, <laughs> yeah, once the campaign is over too, one of the great things about Indiegogo is that it, people will still have a chance to pre-order the book. Um, it goes into what's called in demand. And uh, so if like next May somebody hears about this and says, oh, I wish I would have gotten in on that, they can go to this page and, and pre-order the book and get it uh, fulfilled at the same time every, all the backers did. Right. So it's not like, like we no longer have any, you know, uh, like there's no urgency for to meet a goal of to do it or not anymore, but people have a chance to continue to, you know, support us by ordering books. And then we have a good idea when print time comes along, how many copies we need to print, you know? So we'll print obviously more than enough to fulfill all of our backers and and in-demand buyers. And then we'd like to print up a bunch more so we have it available for people to buy at Comic-Cons or, you know, online or whatever. We've been trying to to promote it on shows like yours and on, you Mm -hmm. know, social media. But there's gonna gonna be some people who, you know, who are gonna stumble across this, you know, next spring. And we would yeah. you know, shut them out because you know because um, the campaigns are finite. 
<laughs> yeah, Tom first told us about this at uh, C2E2 back in like February. February. And yeah. so then, he, yeah, he called me up and told me, hey, man, it's going. I was like, all right, let's absolutely yep. talk about it. Well, We've guys, been I mean, out there since last year, so it's quite a while. <laughs> we're, we're at a full 30 minutes, and it, that blows my mind just in and of itself. This just absolutely flew by. The book's called Claptrap. You can find it on uh, Indiegogo and just search uh, for Claptrap. Tom, Desmond, this has been absolutely phenomenal. I want to go ahead and close out with your video that you have uh, promoting the thing. So <laughs> uh, before we cut to that video, just a huge thank you to you guys. Uh, and if you're watching this video, Claptrap on Indiegogo. Uh, any final words for anybody, uh, potential backers out there? Um, we're working hard to entertain people. So just we'll just check it out. You'll know for yourself if you have interest in it. I mean, we we put some some of the contents up. We put our intentions up. We put the perks up. And if, if they appeal to you, then you decide for yourself. I'm going to try hard not to die between now and the time I have this book finished. <laughs> do your do your absolute best, Tom. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, this has been an absolute treat. I mean, from somebody who's been a fan of your work for years upon years, uh, thanks a lot for reaching out to us. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us about the project, and best of luck with the project. Well, thank thanks, you. Chuck. Thanks for having us. Yep. You're very welcome. So everybody, enjoy this video explaining Claptrap in a very goofy way. So we'll see you guys here <laughs> next time. Thanks a lot, Tom and Des. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, I'm writer Desmond Devlin. Oh, and I'm artist Tom Richmond. Tom and I have been parodying movies together for exactly 20 years. Over those two decades with Mad Magazine, Des has written the most movie and TV parodies and I've drawn the most. We've worked together a lot. I love when Tom draws anything I write because his art really makes the jokes pop on the page. His characters are so precise, but his style is so loose and so funny. Working on Des's scripts was always a treat. They were always clever and snappy and laugh out loud hilarious. And that made the art end of things a lot more fun. The kind of parodies we do started in the 1950s and they've given us a silly and satiric look at the history of American culture. Over the years, these parodies have become their own comics genre and a unique part of American culture until the final one appeared in print last year. Everybody knows what a tough time it is for print comedy. But Tom and I don't want to see this great, humorous tradition die. That's, That's where, where you come, come in. Because there aren't any publications creating and printing these parodies anymore, Des and I decided to do them ourselves. We're creating an all-new hardcover book of movie parodies, including some big old favorites that you guys love, but for whatever reason, were never parodied. Those lucky movies managed to escape our pens. Until now, the title of our book is Claptrap. first movie we're doing is Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Man spoofed eight Star Wars movies in a row. That's everyone except for the finale? Come on! Somebody's got to finish the saga. And as you can see, we've already done it. Des and I never missed a deadline in 20 years together on these parodies for Mad, and we aren't about to miss any deadlines now. With your backing, this book will get done. Tom and I have begun the work, but the two of us can't finish the project without your help. Please allow us to keep the classic parody format alive. We promise to deliver you a book we know you'll enjoy. And for those who want more than just the book, we have plenty of snazzy extra perks to choose from.